Hi, I'm Exo, and I'm on a journey to becoming a DIY guru. If you're a garden enthusiast or a homeowner looking to add a natural element to your home, a window box of plants will bring you fresh scents and sometimes even flavors for the kitchen. And plus, I think it makes a beautiful feature. It's a quick and easy DIY that you can definitely make in your own spare time. Let's head over to the workshop and I'll show you exactly how I made this. So we're basically making a box and then adding a decorative feature on the outside and then hanging this with chains and brackets. Now this box takes two plastic 500 millimeter flower boxes. To make the box, you'll need a sheet of plywood. Here's my cutting list. Or you can work on your own dimensions. Just take it to your local builders and make use of the in-store cutting service. You'll also need a drill driver, a speed pilot, a Phillips bit, a pack of 4 by 30 mm screws, 80 grit sandpaper, quick set wood glue, a pair of clamps and a marker. So all I need to do is to assemble the pieces and I'll start by putting the pieces together to see which piece goes where and also to mark where I'm going to be putting the screws in and showing that the marked places for the screws at the corners are offset so the screws don't clash. Then I'm going to drill all the pilot holes for the screws and countersink the hole slightly on those exact marks so that the screws sit flush against the surface. I'm going to give the timbers a quick sanding just to get them smooth. Now let's put the pieces together and using wood glue together with the screws will give us a much stronger join. So starting with the 200 by 1000 mm sheet of ply which will be for the base, run a bead of wood glue on the outer edge and spread it across to avoid the glue squeezing out when you tighten the screws. Position the base and place the 210 by 1000 mm sheet of ply perpendicular to the base to form a butt joint with the base being on the inside. Ensure that your edges are flush and screw it into place. I prefer putting at least four screws and then do the same for the opposite side. Next is to attach the smaller 210 by 236 mm piece for the sides. So I'm going to apply the wood glue on all three edges, position the piece and screw it in place. So the box is done. Now you could leave it like this, but I figured it's a feature. Why not give it some character by staining it and adding a decorative finish. And for that, we're gonna be using Fine Earth Woodworks. It's a stain and sealer in one. It's non-toxic, it's fast drying, and because it's water-based, it's so easy to clean. I'm going with the Emboya color for the box and white for the decorative finish. Just paint it on with a brush, applying even strokes, working with the pattern of the grain. And while I wait, let's cut and stain the wood strips for the decorative feature. For this, you'll need two 3 meter lengths of 44 by 8 millimeter planed all round timber, a jigsaw, hammer, and panel pins, as well as a tape measure, pencil, and a square. I need six pieces for the sides, 242 millimeters long. That's the length of the box, plus the thickness of the timber. And at the front, I just need three of those strips, 1,050 millimeters long. And I'm gonna mitre cut these at 45 degrees so that I can form mitre joints. Starting with the 242 millimeter pieces, clamp the timber into place and cut one piece at a time to account for blade thickness. Remember, I only need the 45 degree cuts on one side of the strip. So I'll do the same until I have six pieces. Next is to cut the three strips for the front. And these will be 1,050 millimeters long with 45 degree mitre cuts at opposite angles on either side. So let's measure, mark and cut these. There we are, I've got all the pieces cut and I really like how the two colors contrast. So for the timber strips, I'm gonna be using Fired Earth Woodworks in a whitish color. Same as before, paint with the grain. The box and strips are dry, so I can now attach the painted strips onto the box, making sure that they flush with the top edge. Run a bead of wood glue and give it a quick smear before securing with panel pins. If you have any glue seep out, just wipe it with a rag. Do the same for the bottom strip and then measure and find the center point of the side panel and mark it. And then mark the midpoint on the back of the strip. Line these marks up and the strip will be centered. Do the same for the front and the last side, making sure that your corners line up as you go. The window box is done. Now there are two options here. Number one, you can mount the brackets beneath the window box. Or number two, you can mount the brackets above the window frame and hang the window box with a chain. I quite like that idea. So to mount it, 
you'll need a drill driver with a 6mm masonry bit and a 6mm wood bit, brackets of your choice, some 6 by 70 mm nailing anchors and a hammer, a 10mm spanner and a spirit level, 4 lengths of chain, 6 eyeballs, 6 D shackles and 4 small washers. First I'll drill a hole at each corner below the top strip as I don't want to pull the strips off in any way. Then I'll insert an eye bolt and put a washer on the inside and then fasten it with a nut, making sure it's nice and tight. I can then attach the lens of chain using a D-shackle before mounting the wall brackets. Just remember to space the brackets the same distance apart as the length of the box. Now I can hang the box onto the brackets using the last two D-shackles and eye bolts. That's it! Now all you need to do is to plant these with flowers or herbs of your choice and then just pop them into the box. And having these removable flower boxes means I can easily remove them for watering or replanting and I can change the plants easily if I want to. Go ahead, give it a try. Now remember, everything I've used today is available at Builders, in-store or online at builders.co.za. And for more how-to videos like this, check out the blog on the website. Get to Builders, get it done.